the, the simplest things that I can give my students that I, I learned from Stephen and, and uh, practiced along the way and, and baked into my process is most of the time you're saying no to a setup. Yeah. If you just say no more often than they say yes, you're probably going to stay out of trouble more times than not uh, because, you know, uh, this risk is inherent. One of the things that you'll see from generally any indicator, especially these modern indicators, which is, please, if you're listening to this, do not fall for it. Because what people in the modern era are doing is they figured out how to program very simple bots and they have very simple, uh, uh, let's, we'll call it like um, rule-based algorithms that do one kind of thing. That one kind of thing will work really, really well during this time frame, and won't work at all during any other time frame. So when we talk about first, the first thing to talk about is time frames. Right here, we have an indicator called the crab market, and that's that's our that's our description of what we call a sideways market. Okay. And if you see the people don't really know this. Uh, you need to know what what the historical tendency for the market to do is before that's one of the first layers you can do before you start designing anything before you even start thinking about I want to get involved with the market well what what do you mean by that we have a thirty four hundred dollar price right here and if we go back it was forty eight dollars in the back now obviously all these things are like um updated and things like that so the numbers are going to be uh, updated right. Uh, but it wasn't too long ago where the market almost got actually it did get cut in half compared to like modern uh, highs. Okay. So there was an opportunity to double your money just with the Dow. And this is the Dow. So we have a historical chart of what's going on here. Once you gain an understanding of that, you can start designing indicators. And the problem with that is that, oh, my gosh, that what that statement does not give it the respect that it deserves. If you are not a super quant, super genius computer engineer and a genius level trader and investor, and that's the same person, by the way, and also okay. have a, a huge team of other people that are extremely good at what they do and complementary to your talents, I highly recommend you don't waste the next 35 years of your life just to figure out that you can't do it. Yeah. Just to be straight up. All right. So what you're seeing in the modern era are people coming up with flashy looking things that they, they're not doing it purposefully. Some of them, they don't even realize that there's a problem with their, with their program because they haven't actually have no means to test it. Now testing it, honestly, is a different thing than saying, don't you see the signal on was the signal also was here. They're going to find things and assign the value after the fact. Look how many times it worked. They won't look at how many times it didn't work. Or they'll tell you, well, we would have known that that one was different. It's always the same. It's always the same excuse. Yeah, but so looking backwards. Exactly. Backwards looking. Yeah. Oh, don't you see? This was the high. Like, yes, we see that <laughs> it's been a year and it, hello. Oh, this was definitely the look. Yes, thank you. You're doing really good. <laughs> so uh, what you see here, uh, we call the Z band. And the Z band is a bunch of different rules packed in to one pretty, I think it's good looking indicator. And right. I'll just ask you, what do you think? This one means the green one, blue and green. What do you think it means? Uh, yeah, I think that's going to be the market moving up or down. Okay. And if I told you that these things on the top and bottom uh, have meaning as well, would you understand that this means generally up or down or sideways? What would you go for? Yeah, I think it would probably match the band. So I would think they correlate to up or down. Perfect. So Pretty what? Most indicators are simple crossovers. 
This is not that. This is baked into all kinds of our stuff. And we make it look like this. And it depends on the chart that you're looking at. The rules are different depending on the chart, but it always looks the same because it means the same. So that's the answer to your question. How do you design something? Is you need a complex, um, you need a complex, how do you make a complex problem? A, a simple solution for a complex problem. You reduce it down to its simplest terms. And then you work your butt off for a very, 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 very long time and test it rigorously from every angle possible. And then you can maybe end up with something that's uh, that's decent. So this, this chart is a perfect example of what we do. We've got all kinds of different uh, additions here. So you can see that uh, we have different trigger points for different levels. And those trigger points tell us what we should be doing in the macro sense. And uh, we teach people to have a plan for each market condition. And if you have a plan for each market condition, you'll know how to navigate it and what tools to use, which ones are relevant versus living on a hope and a prayer, basically, which is what yeah. we, we find most everyone else is doing. And that includes professionals, by the way, which is another topic. So that's pretty much what we do is we we dip, dip back down and say, well, how did this work back in, you know, actually the crash, are we good? Okay, so at what point, if you, if you were to develop a simple rule for when to be in the market and when to be out of the market, what would you do with this example, Jason? So I want to be in the market. Um as far as going up when that turns green. Okay. And then when would you use the, what, how would you determine when to be not participating in the, in the market? If you're just bull. Um, just based on this, this top indicator here, I guess when it, when I'm seeing the red there. Dude, so you're, you're nailing the it. Same colors. <laughs> exactly. And if we go forward, you can see, that with that simple plan alone, you avoid 90% of the bad stuff, bad meaning going down because we're bulls in this example, and you are participating and profiting 90% or more of the up, which is good for us in our case, as you can see. So um, this that's a, the perfect example of, of what what ends up happening is people have these plans in their heads, but they don't do them. Or yep. they try to get in a little bit late because they missed that little tiny window. And that's what leads to a massive, massive negative impact to their bank account. Because guess what? Normal people do normal things. And generally speaking, most of us are normal. The I got an equation for you. This is absolutely fundamental in everything. Capability equals big technology, like capital, capital T with an underline okay. times knowledge about that technology times practice, smaller practice times aptitude. So what that basically means is if we were going to be in a race and I was in a Tesla and you were on a bicycle, who's going to win the race? Yeah, the Tesla. Right. So we're humans. We have a tendency to think about ourselves first. Everything's through a window called me. Yeah. And uh, we don't realize what other people are doing because you can't see it. All you see is up and down. Right. What the if reason you, why. What, exactly. What if you knew on the backside that all these brokers have access to your trading beha behavior your percentages, how susceptible you are to making trades during certain patterns and how likely you are to do it. Like at what time, what metric, like what uh, tool you're using, do you think that they're not going to use that technology? Oh, they definitely will. They'll have an advantage from doing that. They do. And they put yeah. you in categories. And when you get put into a category, the broker uses that information and 
Uh, we can go down that rat hole some other time again. <laughs> but the point is, no matter what you do, because you're you're going through the middleman, which is the broker, and they have access to basically everything that you're doing and everyone else is doing. It's a really, really bizarre system when you start looking into it. So yeah, and so I'm assuming the like the Z band um, counteracts that, or there there's some solution that you provided to kind of overcome being exposed from a, a data standpoint to the big fish. Yeah. So the the thing is, you cannot have a perfect system. It it doesn't exist. The market is a, a level two chaotic system, which means. Uh, simply put, it reacts to predictions about itself. So this is why when people go, I'm, I'm hunting, I'm looking for the perfect wave. And it's like, you're never going to find it. The best people that did the best people that did this and do this had to co continuously change their approach to remain even just successful. And we're talking about the, the measurement is alpha beating the S&P. And the best people in the world do about 20% average and the amount of resources it takes for them to do that i mean that's where the where where's all the money in the world it's going into stupid things like that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a that's how do we do it we design a tool that makes us understand the current conditions the risk level and what we should be doing during times when those conditions are present Gotcha. And so uh, let's talk about some other tool capabilities, because I'm looking at this here and I'm like, great, I would have known exactly when to jump in on the Dow. But that day I happened to be looking at uh, the S&P. Can you talk about the, the scanning features and just maybe coming in in the morning, how uh, you're per market able to identify these opportunities? Absolutely. So uh, we break it down into a systematic method to make you informed from the highest level all the way down to your specific level whatever that is whether it's binary options day trading or if you're just investing or if you're swing trading blah 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 whatever tool branch you go into and everybody just to give you a fair warning here this is a professional level tool that has been broken down into simple form so you do not need to be a road scholar phd economist to understand as you can see red green up down uh here we go crab market right now you know 70 percent of the time the market's in a crab market so it's smart of everybody to understand how to navigate that it's not as easy as just saying that but there you go so we have different indicators like public news sentiment we got macroeconomic charts that give you into like cpi stuff like that this is a more detailed uh just detailed general perspective on what kind of things going on like if you see yeah a giant bull there snorting or pushing out green smoke and everything's looking bull, then that's how that works. So you're getting kind of an unclear flat or undecided market right there. Okay. So your next level would be looking at a more detailed version of the market. Now, real quick on that last one there, Stephen, was that for the uh, just financial markets overall? Or was that a specific um, market that you were looking at when you were seeing the crab? This is just the, the stock exchange. Just yes. okay. Yeah. So we got different flavors here. Guess what? Z band, different rules, same meaning. We got two 2,500 stocks here. Then it goes up to 72. You can see on the weekly chart, tells you a different story when you include more stocks. And we can get lot longer and longer and all that stuff. So basically, it depends on what you'd be looking for. You go to your category. Uh, I like sectors, you know, major sectors. Let's check that out. Same thing here. Let me just turn off trend lines. These trend lines are automatically draw, drawn, which is not a normal thing. But you talk about consistency. You need drawing your own trend lines is very hard to get it consistent. Yeah. So you can see where where you know the market's hot, where it's not. Stuff like that, pretty easy. And Z band kind of leads the way. Um. So we're working our way down. Then you start looking at. You know, do you like stocks or options? Let's just go to stocks today because we'll lead right into uh, our the evolution of what we what we've uh, actually just implemented live. 
Uh, you can make okay. smart lists. So we have an incredible way to put our indicators to work for you. So we have our master list. We got like 8,000 something, however many tickers that we measure. You can say, I only want to see ones that have Z band on in the last three days, 10 days, two weeks. I like it to be uh, mid cap or above. What's something that you like in terms of a stock, a quality of a stock? Um, so I'm a, a future trader, but if I was thinking about the quality of a, a stock, I definitely would want um, a, a strong direction. Okay, so you can use signal. We have we have a couple different direction signals. You would use Z band signal and trigger. You could okay. also use trend line. So you put conditions in there, and uh, let's just uh, let's just do this real quick. Give you an example. Okay, so I have a list here of, all right, this one's already done. So I can put any of these things wow. on this list. And 90% of these are, are literally 100% we designed them. And then we have everything down to like quant numbers if you want to get really wild. Uh, and you put those categories here and then you put them into this nice little measurement tool and you can create a rule set. And this is just a very, very basic one. And uh, out, out spits the qualifying stocks. Whoa, here we go. There, there you go. I want to see strong. Let me just use your example. Trigger support. Let's see. Boop, boop, boop. Z band. So there you go. So that would be an example right here of your, your settings. You got your highs and lows, support resistance, Z band, and then you got your trigger on here. Trigger is just like a, let's call it like a more general mood of the market on that stock. You've got all the information for your stock, including our ratings, which are negative seven for down, not bad, down, and positive seven for up, uh, investing, dividend options. You've got our, uh, we have several trading systems, sample trading systems, like STG and IG, so Stock Trader Genius and Investor Genius. You can turn those on uh, like right here. No signals here. There we go. So we're still holding the last investment right now, and that's up 36.1% currently. Gotcha. Um, okay, you got your financials right here. Would you say they're making more money or less? Yeah, it looks like they're making more. There you go. The bars, the bars are getting bigger. Yeah, that's right. And you got a reference point right here per quarter. You've got some things that are like green and red. The real simple reference once you get, I mean, let's put it to you this way. After about a week of using the system, you're just going to get it. You're just going to understand like, oh, that means this. It's, it looks like a lot right now, but it really isn't. Gotcha. And you can sort by, you know what? I really like, I want I want a high investing rating. So I'm going to sort by that. And then, oh, I got to do it again. There we go. These are all good investments um, at that layer. So you just go through, kind of go shopping and see, yeah, this one's doing pretty good. I want to look at the monthly long uptrend. Uh, you know what? It looks like it's going and sitting on some resistance right around 20. I'm going to wait a little bit on this one. We're in red category right now. I'm not seeing any Z band, blah, blah, blah. Let's check the weekly. Yep, it confirms what I just said. And it looks like we got at least a 20% rise to hit the top again. But if we're sitting on 20, I'm just doing a quick example of how you could use this. Gotcha. If it's sitting on 20, it bounced off it once before. Maybe I'm gonna keep this on my on my list. So I would take this and I would put it on my um one of my watch lists like this. So all right, I got my categories here. Let's put it in wave. Okay, good to go. And I'll keep my eye on that in a different way. Gotcha. And so just to, I got a question here, just in general on the, the use case. Um, what factors are determining if you come to this screen and you want to see the, the Z stop or you're adding in the ST genius, what makes you check and uncheck those boxes? Is that personal preference for trading, how you're coaching them or um, I guess why why will and will you not use these uh, these features? Yeah. So we, there's a certain level of freedom we need to provide for our members. 
Okay. If some of them like different things for different reasons than, and they like it for their reasons that they've trade logged out and works for them. You're also seeing the, the evolution of the system over time. The, some indicators take the place of a previous one, but because we've layered this on, uh, the Z band is a great example. Mo you don't need trigger and Z, bond, Z band on at the same time because they converge a lot of the time. And this is a good example of it. So as you can see, the Z band did not turn on here, but you have trigger. Mm, okay, which is the what, background color. Is that that's what right. right. What ended up happening, it didn't work out. See? Interesting, yeah. Z band on, it did work out. Z band off or Z band on, or did not come on in the red here. Okay, didn't follow through. There we go, that's a good one. And these two show you that the when it goes, uh, I will call it against you with Z band, that it doesn't have a tendency to go really badly against you. Gotcha. So we can turn some people like trigger. If you want to get in a little bit early, people like trigger. Uh, the Z band is more of a sophisticated technology. So some people like the Z band. There you go. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I, I totally understand having that that flexibility per traders. Uh, so just looking at this screen, I'm thinking about you know some of these big moves when the trigger's on. Um, and I got a question from a coaching standpoint. Uh, how do you guys, and this could be how you're you're coaching new members or personally, how are you setting your goals in the market? I've heard individuals say, hey, whatever I can eat that day, I'm gonna eat. Uh, some people say, hey, this is what I make every single day. This is what I'm willing to you, uh, lose every single day. How do you coach individuals new into the system on setting goals, both overarching and daily, uh, I guess, P&L based starting and stopping points? Let me let me just one statement here before Rob takes this one. OK. The. You need a reference point. If you if you do that, you're 10 years away from figuring out that that's the wrong methodology for training. So the first thing you do is create a very, very specific reference point from which you can develop a practice with the attempt to master. That's, that's what I go ahead, Rob. Yeah. <laughs> As a, uh, the, the highest levels, you know, Stephen just nailed it. Um, when, when it comes to the rubber meeting the road and especially that smart list dashboard that we were seeing right there, uh -huh. uh, constantly in, in our traders and our members' ears to think about risk, not the reward. Um, the results are a byproduct of your process. So if your process is tight, as you talked about, clean inputs and consistent inputs yield clean, consistent outputs. Uh, so having a plan writing a plan down that's totally separate from this that you can reference on in a notebook or on a, you know, a document on your machine. Yeah. It's all about having that plan first. And Steven and I learned that firsthand in the military. Um, once you have the plan and that is tested and, um, you know, basically, uh, you know, sh shown to be productive over time, then it's really about staying, staying on track with that plan, making sure that you're in the right plan for the market environment that you find yourself in. That's why you start with the, the highest level. But this is a dashboard, brother. And each, each of us is gonna have a different risk tolerance. So the analogy I use when Stephen and Alan um, programmed this and released this to us, it was 2018, um, maybe 2019, we, used to, we were able to get our hands on the smart list. It is a filtration machine. Like, like the question is, where does it fit into your trading system or your trading business. Well, it's feeding you candidates to hire each stock in my portfolio I consider a, uh, or ETF is, is a candidate or is a uh, employee under my business. They're at work for me. My money's at work with them, they're at work for me. So I interview them every day using a smart list. Uh, and these, a, a good quality list of candidates is, is infinitesimally smaller than that 9,000 stocks in the, uh, in the system here. So gotcha. it's a much more efficient process for me. And it gives me the highest quality candidates, whether I decide to hire them or not, that's where my trading plan comes in. And if, it's, if everything checks, checks the boxes, all boxes are checked, then it's a go. And I could put in a buy order for that stock or ETF. 
Uh, but if not, just let it go. And most of the yeah. time you're saying no to these, these opportunities here. Yeah. So it's really about overstepping losers more about more than it is about getting those winners. Yeah. And, and when you're wrong, and just admit you're wrong, like Stephen said, if you have all these risk lowering indications like the Z band and pile on a couple different indicators, it's typically going to, when, when you do take a, a loss, it's going to be a, a mitigated loss, a much smaller one um, that you can absorb. You can't, you can't absorb the, you know, have you ever gotten really emotional in your trading career, Jason, and just got emotionally attached to a position? Well, oh, yeah, and definitely. Take a massive loss, maybe 100% <laughs> loss. Worse than a breakup, right? You get that into me. <laughs> <laughs> it, it cuts right to the heart of you. Um, been there myself. But, yeah, with the right tools and the right indicators on, those losses are are minimized, um, and you can make a systematic uh, – the, the system uh, pay you over time more often than it takes away from your trading. Gotcha. And so I want to uh, kind of transition to one of the pillars that I know you all focus strongly on, um, and that's community. Um, specifically, you've added the new Discord. Um, can you just talk about the importance of a community, right, and, and not, uh, you know, someone who says, hey, I'm going to join – uh, the group here, I talked to Rob yesterday, and then I'm going to sit in the corner, you know, in my house for the next six months. Uh, please talk about the importance of community and then the, the discord and how that's added to the community that you all provide. Yep. So we, we were on Facebook. We started off on Facebook because, you know, 10 years ago, that was really the only way to do it. Yeah. Uh, since then, Mark Zuckerberg, I've got another name for him. I won't, I won't mention maybe off camera. Um, they, they are practices. It's clear that that technology is not there for our benefit. It's there for his and, sure. or other people, blah, blah, blah. So um, we decided to move off to a more we'll call it private. Unfortunately, Discord's not as private as we want it to be, but it's, it's good because what we can do is we can automate some of our processes. The, the, community aspect of things. When you go to most trading communities, it's all about how much money made, how much money lost, what is this person? I mean, it gets really chaotic and it's not helpful. We've found and tested rigorously. It's not helpful at all for me to know that you made 5% today. What it does is it influences yeah. me to be more aggressive to compete with you. So we have a bunch of different rules that kind of protect the like the, the integrity of what we're trying to build here. And each one of our channels, I'll just bring it up real quick. Sure, that'd be great. So we got our trading channel. We got all this stuff right here. Okay. Uh, if you got a problem, blah, blah, blah. If you got a new idea, if you need some help, and we've got people monitoring this like straight up all the time because we have awesome technology people that love computers way more than Rob and I do. <laughs> um, and they're there. So we have different things. It just creates a dialogue around a topic and it becomes useful. Uh, for example, here is, here's a great example of how fast the, okay. So we had a trade, the trade was went well, this is the QT we'll talk about it in a minute. And okay. everybody wanted to jump. This is exactly the point. It's like, what's the value of the communication? Well, not a whole lot when you are just talking about what, what are we building on here? Oh, wow. We, we made a, it, it, the system made a great trade. Awesome. We love it. But how does that influence you when it doesn't make the best trade? Are you going right. to use it next time? Or are you going to start tinkering around? Right. So, we have to yeah. look at what kinds of communication we're willing to like, uh, it sounds messed up. Hey, it's dark side stuff. We have to address this though, or you're, you're going to cycle through the historical problems over and over and not know why uh, we really focus on give us some good, good quality information here. We have a place for um, just joking around. Where is that? Hang on a second. Up top. I got them all hidden right now. Up top left, hang up. What? Well, anyways, we got like a goof off channel. Okay. Specifically for that. 
that for whatever because people have great you know fairy that's fairy right. tale ideas and or whatever it is and they can go there and do it or share like hey i'm on vacation they can't can't wait to get back to our meeting that sort of thing and rob does a great job there here's an example of like uh, one of our one of our technologies that measures the statistical probability of these tickers moving in a specific direction within a sp uh, specific time horizon very valuable tool uh right here as you can see you can click on them and it can give you this statistical probability and then it gives you a quick reference of z band with trend lines um and some support and resistance levels quick reference some people oh, really nice. love it uh and then here's some just popular stocks we can do this with any stock so Gotcha. Yeah, that's that's the thing about communication and the community stuff that that uh, Rob, you should jump in on this. We we meet regularly with our members, and this is what we do. This is where we find the value in the communication because we can kind of make sure there's a left and right lateral limit because people are people. We all get distracted, For and sure. our job is to make sure that we're being productive and developing a dialogue that has been proven to be effective instead of just i read this book and it said this like whoa whoa <laughs> yeah so and, yeah go ahead rock well just uh just picking up on on steven there um yeah we don't exist just to have a discord channel and and you know just to have software we actually it starts to feel like a second family where we get together at least once a week uh, awesome. as a club and uh, we do in-person get togethers as well. COVID really threw a wrench in those works, uh, unfortunately for a couple of years there, but we're back, back in the saddle, getting together, uh, planning our, our next trip to Ireland. So for those who uh, can uphold these uh, simple pillars, trust, integrity, responsibility, respect, and no spam. Um, those are our, our core values. And, uh, you know, we take them very seriously. It's not really that hard to just be a good person. It's not a hard bar to clear. Right. Um, but, you know, you need to apply for membership in Terrasori uh, and go through a demo, usually with myself, uh, to just get a little bit of screening, make sure you're here for the right reasons. You're not trying to sell something. Um, so you apply for uh, membership at Terrasori and you're a welcome member of community thereafter. And you're able to come to those events uh, weekly. We actually enjoy getting together. We have lots of laughs. A lot of times they go over the one hour target that we have just because we're having yeah. such a great time um, talking uh, after hours. Sometimes some, you know, a, a trader or two will bring a glass of wine and, and you know, hang out and just shoot the breeze. Um, but it's it's about coming together. And, uh, you know, as Stephen said, with systems theory, making a whole that's that's greater than some of its parts, uh, because we all come from different walks of life, different backgrounds. Um, and one of re really the community is is the core mission, I'd say, of Terra. Sorry, I don't want to speak for Alan and Stephen, but um, it's why we're here. It's to empower uh, a single mom who has a couple mouths to feed and doesn't know where else to go. It's to responsibly and wisely interact with the dynamic situation that's the market. That's yeah. in, in a way that's the best fit for that individual. Um, so yeah, we have uh, financial literacy is one of our our big banners going forward and market literacy uh, as a sub uh, kind of sub area of that um, is just educating people uh, and giving them the tools they need to do this wisely and responsibly um, and and basically advance their their lives. And, and I know that's exactly what you get after Jason. You got a great podcast going on. You're putting the, the good word out there uh, on how people can get out of their own way. And sometimes you just need the right people around you because I don't know, brother. I I spent a lot of lonely time staring at a stupid screen with a bunch <laughs> of damn indicators and just wondering what the heck. And I want to yeah, bash sure. my head to a wall. Sometimes it's it's it comes in the practical level of just having somebody to reach out to and and have a quick Zoom call or Discord call with. Say, hey, either I put my foot in my mouth, you know, I I bought into the wrong position, you know, what do you think? Or celebrate the gains, you know, so celebrate something that went right. I nailed my process. I saw this stock coming. I was looking at it for a couple of weeks. It was on my watch list as Stephen showed us. And then it broke out. I got in, got out with a nice game, you know, and people, it, it's a great thing to celebrate those. That's a big step uh, for a lot of folks is getting those consistent gains in their trading business. 
Um, so yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it really is a community effort. Awesome. Yeah. Community is, is definitely important in this industry. So I got two final questions, one on just kind of the, the vision. Um, and then I want to end it off with um, action steps, how people can reach out to you, how they can find you, how they can get started. Um, before we do that, anything else that we may not have covered or that you guys just, just want to say that will add value to anyone watching this? Yes. There's so much information out there. 99% of it's useless and 99% comes from triple PhD people on the news or coming from universities. I mean, we're, we're living in an era where Columbia University, Harvard, MIT have courses on trading. Yeah, Think about wild. that for a moment. That's absolutely absurd that that even people think, wow, that might be a good thing to do. It's like, well, we know people that have gone to those courses and they go, Basically, you learn a bunch of definitions from really, really smart people and you leave having no freaking clue about what just happened to you. Yeah. So stay practical, stay simple and and really focus on what you know. Start there and build outward from there with people that already do what you want to do, mm. not yeah. people that are trying to sell you something. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Anything there, Rob? Free trading as a business. I'll say it till the day I die. And yeah. um, staying organized, simple tools help with that to make wise business decisions. Uh, but stay organized and log your damn trades. That's awesome. So two part question for for both of you. Uh, first off, what visions do you have for your your personal uh, trading this year, and then also company visions just uh, in the short term? Go ahead, Rob. Yeah, uh, we, we just got a new tool uh, a few weeks ago to really test out Quick, Quick Trader. Uh, and there's a couple more uh, comprehensive uh, layers to that, that that are gonna go a little bit longer term. Quick Trader is the, the shorter term version of that, but it okay. is, I mean, the, it, it's, it's a game changer. So that's the number one thing for me this year, uh, staying consistent and really, you know, I started with day trading. Stephen showed me the ropes with that day trading stock options. Um, and that's been my bread and butter. As Stephen said, you have one system that you can nail down and work. And then once the smart list came out, it was 2019, I started stock trading. Um, so that was kind of my medium term game. But now the long game is what I'm really working on now in longer term investments. Okay. Uh, you know, looking at monthly, quarterly charts now. So I'm finally coming to, I guess, what most people start with, which is the big picture view and, and investing. Um, so I started really small. And now that's that's my main emphasis is what am I going to do for wealth creation and generation for the long set? Awesome. Thank you for that. Personally, compounding. Everything, not just personal investments, trading. I mean, I want the actions of today to have bearing on the results of tomorrow at the end of the day. And the everything that we design, everything that we, we even pay attention to is 100% needs to meet that criteria first. Like, how is this going to actually have meaningful impact today, tomorrow, in a year from now? The world's changing at a rapid pace. The world's always changing at a rapid pace. Don't yeah. forget that. It's just relevant to us because we're paying attention to it now. And we're here. So compounding. I want to do as much as I possibly can to make sure that everything that I'm doing is in line with our core principles. And we teach those principles. Rob does it every single day. He proved himself over years. We come from a very, uh, we'll just call it an elite background. And he proved himself to be above and beyond at the delivery of the these uh these principles that tested all that stuff um and we believe in mentorship and in the military called a buddy system uh you look after you look after your brother or your sister and you do the best for them possible so from a personal standpoint that's i'm um, i'm dedicated to serving the community as best i can put the burn the midnight oil if i need to uh whatever design is much as I possibly can, complexity out of the situation. We have a we have a standard, and this is just like a um, it's a personal story behind it. 
But if it's not good enough for the IHOP waitress, single mother, if it's not easy enough for her and doesn't build value in her life, then we shouldn't be doing it. It's that simple. That simple standard keeps us uh, going in the right direction. So organizationally, very similar to that. We want to, uh, sustainability is at the, the core of everything that we do. Unfortunately, we cannot have an unlimited amount of members. We cannot. Uh, we can. We we want to keep our quality as a very very uh, top preference of ours, and we're going to systemically and structurally make sure that we can have these kinds of conversations with all of our members and make sure that they're looked after. We will have other things like um, we're limiting access to some of the tools to ensure its quality. It's real simple. If everyone is doing the same thing, guess what happens? It doesn't work. Right. <laughs> it's and simple it's math, massive. guys. So it's it's one of those things. However, we have several other tools that unless you're slinging around $200 million per trade, you can have a blast uh, all the time with this. And if you are doing that, well, we have someone, we have some tools for that guy or girl as well. <laughs> so organizationally, sustainability, keep the, the integrity of our, our club as high as possible. And what we're currently doing is we are looking uh, actively to fill all of our seats. That's what this next year or two is going to be about. We want to grow the club to a sustainable level. And uh, what we're going to do is kind of take our take our stuff kind of out of the public zone and Basically, if you know someone, you can recommend them. They can come interview for for a a membership, that sort of thing. Just going to try to go from there as the next layer. Gotcha. So let's let's close out on that. Rob, did you have something I want to just just to reiterate the the word character? Stephen brought that up. uh, I think about a year ago, he mentioned you know that's that's our currency in the club is character, Um, and those are the only people we'll we'll choose to deal with going forward. So yeah. If you're just a high high character person like like yourself, Jason, uh, come on, come on and knock on our door. Excellent. So yeah, let's just uh, let's close it out by expanding on that just a little bit. Um, character. I know you guys have some community guidelines as well. Um, tell everyone who's listening who um, is perfect for this opportunity and what they can do to to reach out to you guys and to take the next step. Simply put, we've got ex professionals that have retired we've got professionals that have quit and come to us and use our program we've got uh we've got people that have absolutely no experience or let's call it like a formal education beyond high school we've got people that are like extremely dedicated like all of us right here that but are non professional we're just trying to figure it out and do it on our own we've got extremely high up computer engineers. We've got uh, truck drivers. It, it, if you have a passion for this stuff and you want to be around like-minded individuals that are looking after your well-being as the top priority and are willing to do this, guys, you're going to be looking at Rob's face when you meet and look at the look at the system. You're going to meet with me. We're going to have a, a good relationship. So, that's that's the entire purpose of what we're doing so you don't have to come come in as a a full up round as we would say in the in the military wherever you came from as long as you've got like we said character but that that drive that work ethic to make your business your trading business work nobody nobody should come in with expectations they're going to have their hand held and the buy and sell decisions to be force fed to them. It's not, you're not gonna be spoon fed. Um, so that's unrealistic, but it's really the simplest system you could ask for and the simplest business model. You just have to make a couple wise decisions, buying and selling, right time, right ticker. Um, and a lot of the tools that Stephen and Alan have, have poured a lot of their life's work into make that really simple, but it's not always easy. So uh, persevere and stay organized, just like any entrepreneur should expect to in their field of work. Um, and that's that's kind of the, the prerequisite. You come with that drive, that desire to, to make it happen and uh, to stay organized along the way. I would, I would ask who is not allowed. 
people that are looking for us to fix a lifetime of them messing up their lives. Mm -hmm. And you know what I'm talking about? If, if you've ever talked to somebody, it's like, well, show me what you got. It's like, dude, I don't even know who you are. Like we, <laughs> we work all day and all night doing this and we're all having a great time. And you're telling me this, what is going on. We're looking, for, we don't want people that are not grateful for what they have in their lives. We're, we're not looking for people that are um, in a pinch contact us. We will come up with a, a the best plan that we possibly can for, for you to get into the club and we'll make room for good people. Let's just put, put it that way. But if you're looking at getting into trading because you just lost your job, some sort of life circumstance, some sort of like this convergence zone in your life, it's not the time to start trading. It's not the time to start learning. It's the time to get back to consistency. And we'll tell you that that's not the time to start going in and say, well, I need to start paying my bills in a month. What can you do for me? We're going to say nothing. You need to go back, get, get consistency when you're consistent, come back, or we can help you with that, but we're not going to let you use the technology until you're consistent. Yeah, that makes so, sense. So uh, I'll make sure that we have links for everyone who's listening, everyone who's watching guys, just verbally tell them where, where they should go as they're, they're looking at this right now and want to take action. Terrasori.com. We'll, we'll send you guys a link. Uh, Jason, definitely. If you guys go through that link, go through his link. And uh, that way we can figure out where everyone's coming from. So awesome. Well, this has been very, very valuable. I appreciate you both taking the time to sit down and get this information out. Steve and Rob, thank you for joining me on the Trading Ascension podcast. Thank you. Thank you.